Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Car Wash Magazine Live. I'm your host, Matt Wolf, Editor-in-Chief of Car Wash Magazine. You guys, we've got a great show for you today. At the top of this, um, you could see a little bit of a Stranger Things vibe going on there and a little bit of a light show. That's from our, our guest on the program today, Daniel McCutcheon. Uh, we're going to be talking and visiting with him uh, and his washes here in a little bit. Um, Daniel is a, uh, is a guy who he fulfilled maybe not like every child's dream growing up, but like it was my dream growing up to play in the major leagues. And uh, Daniel did that. Uh, he was a pitcher in the major leagues. We're going to get his story about how he took what he learned in baseball and brought that to uh, the car wash. So stay tuned for that. We're going to get to that in just a minute. We've got a few things I want to go through first. Um, first and foremost, we've got a special show coming up for you guys in just a couple of weeks. Um, we've been doing a lot of uh, shows in this format where we bring on one guest and uh, give you kind of a... Uh, a behind-the-scenes look at what they're doing in their operations. Uh, we're going to do a special holiday marketing panel for you in just a couple of weeks. And so what does that look like? We've gathered a group of some of the best and brightest uh, marketing operators in the industry, and we're going to talk about um, should you go all in on holiday marketing? Should you do the Halloween event? Should you uh, do big Christmas or Hanukkah or um, Thanksgiving events? What, what's your presence look like with Grace for Vets? What are you doing digitally? So all of these things are all on the table. We're going to talk about them. Uh, we're going to get a little education, a little uh, back and forth with our panelists to see um, what they've experienced and what they are recommending. So if you've got questions on that front, if you have um, examples of really cool stuff you've done, I want to see that ahead of time. Send it my way. You can put it in these comments here on this, on this video or just send them to my email address, mdewolf at carwash.org, and we will uh, get those incorporated into the program. So I know there are some folks out there, I've seen the videos, who do amazing uh, Halloween car washes, and so we want to show some of that video footage. Make sure you get it to me um, in time for the show in two weeks. Two weeks. All right. So something else I want to make sure that everybody's aware of, um, just like you all uh, who are doing unlimited programs and have subscription members, uh, members are very important to the International Car Wash Association. We could not do what we do without member support. So make sure that you are current on your membership. Any individual in uh, any of the companies can be a member. Uh, it is an individual membership. And uh, when you join, you get all four issues of Car Wash Magazine and you get the, uh, the feel good factor, right? I mean, it's feel good. You are helping us do what we do to help you. So join. So here's the link right below carwash.org slash join. Up next, my friends, uh, this week on the podcast, Car Wash the Podcast, we've got a really uh, cool interview with David Begin and um, Gleb Serpinski. I don't know if I could say that name more than once, so that's all you get. But he is a, uh, get this, internationally renowned disaster avoidance expert. So what does that mean? Well, that means that he looks at things like strategic planning and crisis planning. And what do you do when you run into things like, oh, I don't know, a global pandemic? So really good insight. Uh, from Gleb in terms of what are the biases in play, and especially for those of us who are uh, in and around the car wash industry, what do, we, what do we overlook because we have a little bit more of an entrepreneurial spirit? So make sure you check that out wherever you consume your podcasts. Uh, for easy uh, navigation, you can just go to carwashthepodcast.com. All right, <clears throat> what else do we need to talk about today? We need to talk about careers. Uh, don't forget, there is the careers.carwash.org um, career center. So that is the ICA Career Center. You can go there if you're looking for your next big thing in car washing. Uh, you can go there if you need to find your next uh, great employee and, and make some postings there. We've got another month, uh, October 1st, until uh, those postings will no longer be free for you to list. So make sure you go check it out. Um, let's just hear real quick. I want to I wanna share a little bit of a feel-good vibe here from a friend uh, down in Georgia, uh, AJ Bornhorst. AJ is a general manager at California Hand Car Wash. Uh, and he uh, completely understands uh, how you make a car wash job into a car ear. Just especially like, you know, having people talk about, you know, hey, you got to check out this new car wash. Um, you know, it's like, it's like one of my uh, good friends, she told me, she's a hairdresser, she says, I'm super picky about my hair, which is why I cut hair. You're super particular about your car, which is why I only take my car to you because, you know, you have pride in it. You know, that's what we try and do. We try and treat our customer's car as if it was my car, you know, for because for me, when I get up in the morning, you know, I start my car and it's clean, spotless inside now. Like, 
I feel good and that's, you know, what I try and deliver, you know. If you're just joining us, uh, that was AJ Bornhorst talking about um, some of the things he loves about the car wash industry. AJ is a general manager at California Hand Car Wash in Georgia. Yes, that's right. California Hand Wash in Georgia. Uh, I am your host, Matt DeWolf. We're talking today about a lot of things, um, but we are going to be getting into the meat of the program here in just a minute with Daniel McCutcheon, uh, former Major League Baseball player down in Texas. So stay tuned for that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about from an ICA perspective, uh, ICA stands for International Car Wash Association, if you didn't know. Uh, I want to make sure that you all are aware that the Women's uh, Leadership Program um, deadline is coming up. So that certificate program, we partnered up with Notre Dame so that um, women in this industry can join a cohort, an online cohort for 30 days, all of November, to uh, take your career to the next level. So coming off of that uh, career center, this is, the next, this is the next thing that you do, right? You find your job, and then you develop yourself. So W, uh, the women's leadership experience, we can't do that in person this year, so we are doing the women's leadership certificate program with Notre Dame. Make sure you sign up. October 15th is your deadline. You can get all the information you need right here. <clears throat> what else do we have for you today, my friends? Lots of stuff. So uh, if you haven't watched the program before, or maybe, you, maybe you've only watched it in the, in the recent few weeks, you may have missed some of our stories uh, from our segment called It's Only a Question. So I want you to watch this, and as you watch it, think about what you can send to me because there's going to be a prize involved. My favorite car wash story is at our second location. Um, it was in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. It had a creek that ran along the back of the property. Uh, the manager's name was Dean King. He hated snakes and had a slick bald head. And we saw snakes from time to time from the creek. Um, one day he was in the tunnel working on something, walked in the equipment room and um, went to wash his hands. There was a water line over the sink. He didn't know it, but there was a snake on the water line. He leaned forward to wash his hands in the sink and a snake fell, hit him right on top of his bald head and landed right in the sink. He screamed, ran out of the equipment room like a little girl, and we all still laugh about it today. It was awesome. All right, so that's your homework. Tell me what is your favorite car wash story, and you can submit it at carwash.org slash vidquest. The first person who submits a video that we use on this program, I'm going to send you, that's right, I'm going to send swag out this time. I'm going to send you a swag pack from ICA. Make sure you send it in carwash.org slash vidquest, and I will send you swag. Normally, I'm shamelessly asking asking you to send me stuff. Um, this time, I'm sending it to you. But guess what? Still send Matt swag. Hashtag send Matt swag. So this is the swag cam, everybody. Swag cam. Here it is. So send me your stuff. We'll highlight it on the program. A lot of cool gear coming in. My swag is overflowing at this point, um, so that is pretty exciting for me. All right, friends. My favorite part of the program and yours we got jokes. This week's um, terribly good or terribly bad joke is uh, is in honor of the Car Wash Show 2021 in Las Vegas. Uh, goes with the the theme of what uh, you know what you might do in Vegas uh, when you're not on the trade show floor. So here it goes. <clears throat> what is the only animal that you never want to play poker with? A cheetah. Hey, hey. yes. <laughs> There it is, friends. You are stuck with my jokes until you send me yours, mdewolf at carwash.org, and uh, we will get your jokes onto the program. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at Big League Car Wash in Texas.
All right, everybody, we are here on the program is Daniel McCutcheon. Daniel, welcome to the program. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. Hey, so um, awesome wash video we just saw. That was uh, mostly about your new location. Um, we'll see um, We'll see it maybe um, on social media after this program, a little bit of a light show that you did there as well. Was the light show that we did at the top of the program from that same location? Yes, yes, it was on uh, number two. Okay. All right. So you, so you elevated a little bit. You went, you went big league, so to speak on number two. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, I had a, a buddy in the car wash industry that started a new business, uh, Adam Grant with GS light systems and, uh, it's all the, the integrated lights and we can make them jump to music and, and change color at a press of a button the whole tunnel. And so, you know, something that he started a new business and I was kind of the guinea pig pig of that business, but, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty awesome so far. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the light stuff here in a minute, but let's back up like, I don't know, 800 steps and, okay. uh, give me <laughs> sort of like how, how in the world did you go from major league baseball to car washing? I mean, come on. Yeah. So, uh, I've always loved business. Uh, and I've always loved baseball too. So the, the, the first plan was to make a hundred million dollars in the big <laughs> leagues. Uh, I played in the big leagues. I didn't make a hundred million. So I got out with a little chunk of change, uh, but not enough to live the rest of my life on. And, uh, I looked at a few different things. My, my brother-in-law is, is Tyler Fernie who owns today's car wash. And, uh, he had started it, got out of the military, uh, started today's car wash, I think in 2010, uh, and, uh, been successful at it. You know, has five locations. Uh, so, I knew that he had done it. I knew a little bit about the industry. I got out uh, in, you know, probably the last six months of, of my career. I saw it coming to, to an end. Uh, I live in a booming part of, of central Texas, New Braunfels, Texas, one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S. And it was a, a good place uh, for a car wash. And, you know, from the day I retired to the day I opened up, finding the land and everything was about one year to the day. So moved pretty quick on, you know, becoming a, our washer that that is a that is a quick move into uh into the business but you forgot a part right like you you told me you told me that you spent time during spring training looking at car washes really yeah so it was a uh, we I, I, I played for six different uh six different major league teams so i was in florida uh for spring training and i was in arizona for spring training uh and then knowing my brother-in-law in the industry uh, it was in the back of my mind for a long time. So I got to visit a lot of awesome washes in Florida and a lot of awesome washes in Arizona. Uh, just saw, you know, I remember the first time I saw a little air spray nozzle and I thought it was so cool. And I, I you know, sent a text to my brother-in-law saying, dude, you have to have these at your washes. Uh, so I was able to tour a lot of different washes to kind of come up with the the concept of what we have at Big League Wash. That's really funny. Uh, you know, for most most folks, it takes them a little longer to get to the point where they're, um, you know, wanting to check out car washes on vacation. But <clears throat> you got there pretty quick. <laughs> you got there early, early and often. It sounds like. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about. So when you you got into business pretty quickly right after right after your baseball career, when you got into when you got into it, what kinds of things did you kind of take from, you know, the the baseball side of the house and, and bring over to the wash? Like what lessons did you learn? What helped you along the way? Yeah. So it's, uh, I found that there's a lot of correlation between uh, sports and, and business. Uh, you know, the, the simple things like teamwork and, and being able to, being able to, to work with, uh, with different groups of people. Uh, you know, as I've always thought of myself as a leader on, on the baseball field and then, you know, running a business kind of, kind of the same thing leading by example. And, you know, I'm just not a financial investor. I mean, I'm, I, I own the car wash owner operated. I have two locations now, so it's a little bit different, but you know, when I first got opened, I mean, I was working my 80 hour weeks, I'm scrubbing cars, I'm drying off customers, cars. I'm in, I'm in the trench. I'm uh, learning, learning the car wash things off the cuff and, you know, learning how to fix pumps and how to, how to unclog rain bars and, deal with damage claims and, you know, all of that fun stuff, uh, just kind of getting thrown right into it. But, uh, you know, I've used this, this baseball theme, uh, and, and yeah, just, just a lot of things that I learned in, in, in baseball about being even killed, you know, yeah. not, 
not getting too excited on the, you know, the, the sun's out and we're going to watch a thousand cars and not getting too down in the dumps when it's rained for a week. And, uh, and I need to wash more cars, but trying to stay even keel and, and, and focused. And yeah, I'm just loving what I'm doing right now. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Baseball is a long game, right? Like in all, in all of the, in all of the ways it is a long game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so was, okay. So what was it like to be a, you know, a rookie again, so to speak? Like you, you had to, you had to learn a, a completely new environment. What, what kind of things were helpful for you along the way to, to kind of get, go from rookie to, you know, I don't know, getting into the rotation from a car wash perspective. Yeah. And I, I've talked about my brother-in-law, Tyler, um, opened up his watches to me and I got to, while I was building, I went there and, and on site and saw their day-to-day operations. Clayton Clark was another, uh, huge who owns a uh, whitewater express, another, big influence for me. Uh, you know, I got these two guys that were, you know, my, it still are my mentors, but letting me go and check out their sites and seeing what a successful operation looked like. Uh, not only from, you know, what they're doing on site, uh, which I picked a few things from Whitewater. I picked a few things from today's car wash and I picked a few things from other car washes that I had gone to, but, but, uh, you know, also with the site layout, things like that. And, and they were really there to help me with that to, you know, have ample stacking. Uh, you know, we were three lanes. We have a, a fast pass, fast pass only lane, and and just the the things that I would have missed out on. I think if I didn't have those two guys to to guide me through it. But you know, we we built with uh, number one. I built with the intention of washing a lot of cars and being able to wash a lot of cars. Uh, things that I didn't really understand why I was doing it, but now I'm like, oh man, I'm glad. <laughs> glad I can stack 26 cars, right. glad I can fit seven cars from the pay station to the start of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of vacuums in the vacuum spaces and things like that. I didn't know about that they taught me to build the right way. And yeah, it definitely gave me a, a heads up for you know success. Yeah. You, it would have been a, it would have been a very different first wash had you, uh, had you not been aware of some of those, some of those key things. Cause that's not like, it's not like those are easy fixes, right? You, you screw up your stacking. You got to start all over. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to, to move some in. Yeah. Yeah. turns out when it's down, it's down. Um, so, okay. So you learned, you learned a lot, obviously in that first location. Um, it went so well that you decided you'd go ahead and just make another one. What, what's maybe like one or two things that you've taken from that first one that maybe you, um, either thought was really important to carry over to that second location or maybe that you changed. Maybe it was a little bit of a, of a left turn. Yeah. Well, speaking of left turn, we're all left turns on number one and we're all right <laughs> turns on number two. There you go. So I'm only about two and a half miles from my first location to the second location. So I have members that go to both. So I've definitely heard it from the members. Ah, everything's backwards here. Or, you know, <laughs> I'm used to turning left and now I'm turning right. But, uh, you know, I, most of the things at, at number one, I did right. And of course, there's there's a few things that I would have done different, uh, but uh, I was I, I was able to do the same thing at number two. I'm parallel to the main road uh, with windows facing the road, which I, mean, I like. The, you know the high the high traffic count that we have out front. You, yep. I mean, you can't help but stare at the watch, especially if it's night and you have all the the, the light show going on and things. And uh, you know, I, I built it with a, a stadium theme in mind. You know, I wanted it to resemble a, a baseball stadium we are going going all in on yeah. on the sports theme uh artificial turf out front i've done at both locations nice did it myself <laughs> Ten thousand square foot at number one and thirteen thousand square foot at number two and i'm going to hire someone for number three to put it down i put in my work for that uh yeah we i, I definitely carried over a lot that i learned from from number one to number two and it, it's pretty awesome just in the industry you know three years later the new the new technology that's come out, you know, just, just small upgrades within the tunnel on yeah. um, all of my equipment is, is sunny. I'm, I'm sunny DRV and, and Bacu tech and, and all three of them have, have, have made upgrades in, in the three years uh, from number one to number two. Nice. Nice. The, um, so let's let's come back to the lights. So, um, you mentioned, you mentioned that at night it's cool cause you can see it from the, from the wash. And I, I think Blake Newman is probably watching this program and he does a lot of stuff with lights too. Uh, Blake, sorry that you had to shave your beard off. That's a really unfortunate move. Um, but you know, I, it can, it can grow back, I guess. Uh, let, but the lights, Blake's been talking a lot about extending that experience to the night. 
you're talking about you know visibility from the road and just and having that light impact um, customers being able to see you from almost like a marketing perspective but what's it is that it i mean is that the the level of thinking that it is or does it go a little deeper than that is there something else on why you go all in on these lights yeah i mean it's definitely the, the kids love them the you know ever everyone loves the light show with with this new the new lights that i i put in at, at number two i mean i can change them i have a controller in the office so I can make my whole tunnel red or blue or green, uh, you know, themes, pink, uh, you know, whatever. So from a, like, if you're thinking like from a marketing standpoint, it's kind of endless. And I can also, uh, I have an FM transmitter and I can play a song and I can, you know, just like you see Christmas lights, uh, I can have the, the lights jump to the music. Uh, we're still pretty new. I, I just opened up in June. So we've been going through the summer months and, you know, it gets dark at nine o'clock and we close at eight o'clock. So haven't had a huge opportunity to like when we're in uh, when we're in business or during operational hours to be doing the light show. Although we we do have it and you see it in the tunnel, but as as far as having that bright light from the streets. But here now that fall's coming and it actually feels like fall in Texas today. This is the first day it's hasn't been a hundred in a long <laughs> time. Uh, so you know now that we're uh, you know, coming to the winter months, uh, I'm pretty excited about different things we're going to do. If I want to do a, a, you were talking about a Halloween theme. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we can do that with the lights. Uh, we did like for 4th of July, I played a, a God bless America. And I had the, the lights dance into that just on, on repeat. So I had a lot of people come by and you could tune into the radio station and see it. So uh, I don't know, the, the marketing possibilities are endless. And I also not to take forever on this question, but you know, <laughs> just, just the value for me, like when, I think when a customer sees like the money and like how well you built a wash, it, it's a, it gives them a sense of security. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I can take my new platinum F250 through here that I spent $75,000 on because it just gives them a sense of security that they know that I've spent the money, they know I've done everything right. And then a sense of security for them taking, in a lot of cases, their most expensive item through, through the power wash. Yeah, I mean it's it's so much about perceived experience for people, right? And and yes. being able to bring I love the lights because so like obviously I am in video stuff, right? So I love um the little things that you can do with lights to really make a big difference in terms of what people see and how they're perceiving something and what you're doing with the lights is super awesome. I love that. Um I love just the extension um of being able to kind of enhance that customer experience and especially the flexibility, like you were talking about, like just being able to like do lots of different things and like change the look and feel as you go, because that's really, that's really the way that you can appeal to a lot of people and keep it fresh. And from a marketing perspective, I mean, you, you will never get bored. Let's just, let's just say that. Um, speaking of themes and, and kind of marketing, you went all in on the baseball theme. Uh, and it's big league car wash. Your, your packages are appropriately, appropriately named. Um, but it almost wasn't, uh, big league car wash. Can you, can you kind of share how you came back and decided to go all in and why? Yeah. You know, I, I played professional baseball for 11 years. Uh, I played five years in college, got hurt. I rich in a year. Uh, you know, I was, I, I was on the cusp a lot, big leagues, my, uh, big leagues, triple a most of my career, I spent five, five different seasons in the big leagues. Uh, but I get out of baseball and I, had, I was a little bit bitter. No, I'd come off not a great season. I retired. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my wife was pregnant with our third, our third child. I told her if I wasn't, didn't get called back up to the big leagues, I was retired. So we kind of, I kind of set that at the first of the season. I'd been in AAA the whole, the whole year before. So, you know, with, or I, I retired and baseball wasn't really on my mind. I was ready to shift all of my focus to something else. But, uh, you know, I, 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 as all the other car washers have done, you know, you look, you try to come up with a, with a, a cool car wash name. And I, I ran by a few different ones, but then it just came back to why not use, you know, what I did for a long time and throw it into a baseball team. I knew I was going to be owner operated. I knew I was going to be on site and it just turned out great. No, I wasn't a huge name. People hear the name McCutcheon and they think I'm my brother from another mother, Andrew McCutcheon, which I'm not. Uh, I'm Daniel McCutcheon, although I did write his coattail a little bit in the big leagues, but, uh, you know, being, I, I'm on site, 
I help dry off cars. I talk to customers. It does just bring a unique aspect to the car wash that I think, you know, adds to the hashtag or not hashtag quotes, cool factor of the yeah. car wash. You know, I'm, I'm a former major leaguer is drying off your car, talking to you. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm not, I'll, I'll play that card. I mean, if, if playing in the big leagues can give me a, a, a head start on anything in life, shoot, I work my butt off to play in the big leagues. So I'll play that card for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's not like um, it's not like it was easy for you to get there, right? No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, hey, so okay, so speaking of baseball, I have to ask the question: who who was one player that I don't know maybe gave you some serious fits over the years? There were a few. You know, I had one of my good friends uh, is a hitting coach for uh, Milwaukee Brewers. He's good friends with Lance Berkman. Lance Berkman's from the area that I'm at. They were talking about me one day and. And uh, Jason Lane goes, yeah, Daniel McCutcheon, you know him? And Lance goes, uh, long-haired guy, pretty good hitting. That's how he described me, pretty good hitting. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> pretty so good there's a few hitting. guys that probably like facing me. And, you know, I had some success, too, so there's some guys that didn't. But uh, when I think about a guy that was pretty scary in the box, Derek Lee comes to mind. Oh, yeah. 6'6", uh, six, six, huge arms. You know, the scouting report on him, for those of you that like baseballs down in a way that – you see the catcher setting up down and away. And I mean, the guy he <laughs> doesn't look down and away. So my first, you know, I followed the scouting report on him. He said 86% of the time he takes first pitch and doesn't swing. So first time I face him, I grew a fastball down and away and he takes me beat dead center. Second pitch I ever threw to him is next at bat. I, I went with a change up OO and he took me deep down the left field line. And the third time he swung at the first pitch again and he lined out to center. So his first three swings and his first three first three pitches I threw him, he took three swings and a, a line out to dead center and two homers. So, yeah, I helped his career a little bit better and he made mine a little bit worse. Yeah, hey, hey, he owes you, right? I mean, he probably got a better contract because of that. <laughs> yeah, we actually became teammates later on. He, re- he retired playing for Pittsburgh Pirates in 2011. We, we traded for him at the trade deadline. So I became buddies with him and he, get, he signed me a bat because – I let him get two homers off this. I got that bat hanging in my office now. That's funny. That's funny. Well, I'll make sure. Uh, I'll make sure that uh, I've got a little something for you that I'm going to send you after the program. So uh, right. I got. I got to get your address. I got to send you something. Okay. Um. Hey, before we let you go and let you get back to uh, the business of washing cars, can you just kind of tell everybody what gives you hope? What kind of keeps you coming back? Yeah. Uh, this industry is awesome. I love it. I mean, I've, I've got to meet a lot of uh, a lot of great people. Uh, just, I mean, as, if, as far as the car wash business in general during during this, especially for the express model during this pandemic, still being able to to stay open and wash cars, and you know, for for me in my town, it was something something for families to be able to do, especially what we call them season ticket holders. Are our, our fast pass members, you know, they can keep their windows up, pull up to the gate, the gate goes up, the kids can enjoy the light show, you know, especially when it's first going on, getting out of the house. Uh, so yeah. we were, we not only were we, were we keeping your car clean, but we were giving you something to do safely uh, to get out of the house. Uh, so j- just a great industry until someone comes up with a way to keep cars clean without washing them, we're going to be around. So uh yeah, I'm honored to be a part of the industry, uh, to fit right in. Uh, the competition's great. Uh, Top Car Wash on Facebook is great, being able to get insight from people all over the country, and they're sharing their 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 secrets, so to speak, with you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I guess that, that gives me hope is how, how great the Car Wash community is. Yeah, there's no there's no lacking of community, and I, I got to tell you, um, you you picked the right place to go. If you were looking for a place that was still kind of had that – teamwork, teammate vibe and collaboration. This is hands down the industry to be in because time and time again on this program, I talk to people about, hey, what do you like about the industry? And it's always it's always the people. It's always the willingness of people to share what's working, what's not. And you don't see that everywhere. You know, a lot of people keep things pretty tight to the chest, but in this industry, uh, we like to share as long as, you know, as long as you're not across the street from me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, Daniel, uh, thank you so much for being on the program today. Um, 
It's been a great uh, privilege for me to be able to talk to an actual uh, Major League Baseball player. Uh, I'm sure that you would K me on three pitches, so um, I've got you've got that going for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm all washed up now, but uh, back in the day, get there it you washed go. up, baseball player, washed up. I get it. I get it. See, you should. You need to send me some jokes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean. I got jokes. We all got jokes. We all got jokes. Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for being on the program. For those of you watching, uh, one thing you got to do this week when you're out there, keep it clean.